Hello, CC community, and welcome to week four for the visual fine arts. So this week I tied in the science parts, which is what are some parts of the food chain, and we're going with a producer. Trees produce oxygen for us. They provide fruit, provide nuts, um, and not just for us, but for um, lots of other different animals. So we're gonna do an abstract tree. We're gonna do a little bit less drawing and working in with some mixed media. So this project may look like it goes fast, but I think also in the process of teaching them about abstract art, it's also good to teach them about how to handle certain um, supplies that we use. So we're gonna be using scissors, you can use colored paper, or these are some swatches of paints that I got at like a big box store. You can just say, hey, can I take a few swatches to do an art project with my class? Or you could say, are there some old ones that you're looking to throw away? And they don't have to be green. I actually just happened to have these for something else I did a few years ago um, because it is abstract. It can be whatever color you want it to be. And here um, in Georgia, there's hopes that fall may come if the heat would leave. Um, but we've got the leaves changing colors, so it'd be very appropriate to have pinks, yellows, reds, oranges in here as well on your tree. So that's your call, and that's an, an area that you could give them a choice in is saying, hey, you could do you know, a, a summer tree or you could do a fall tree. But we are going to put something on it. You can't do a winter tree and not have anything on it. So let's get started. So first, um, what is abstract art? I did an art video last year um, and gave a little bit more intro into it. And there's three um, options on that video. But it's when, you know, an abstract piece of art is something that may resemble the object, but it's not a realistic picture of it. I have some examples in that other video, but I'm just gonna stick to executing um, this project right now. But you could show them examples of, here's a realistic landscape, and here is an abstract landscape, or just abstract art, and show them those examples, and then move to the project. So, I have just a piece of printer paper. This week, if you, did want to use cardstock, this would be a good week to use it because the paper is going to put a little bit of weight to it and you are going to add glue to it, but we are going to work on just gluing techniques, which will help hopefully with avoiding having that paper bubble up. So you can use a brown crayon or oil pastel. Y'all know that I love my oil pastels. So when I first drew this one, I actually laid it on a rug in my house just to get that bumpy texture. So that's an option. You could put it up against the wall. You could put it on um, the floor, but of course be mindful of your spaces and you may have children that go off the edge. So the safest thing is to keep it on the table that you're working on. So we're gonna take that brown. We're gonna use our old trusty ruler and we're gonna put our hand down at the corner of the paper. And we're just gonna draw the base of our tree, our producer. We're just gonna draw a straight line down, okay? And then we're going to come beside it. We could put two fingers beside each side, one, two, and then maybe come down here, and we're gonna have two fingers on each side, here and here, to get a nice, strong base of a tree and go like that. And then trees, there's all different kinds of bark. They're smooth and bumpy. So let them experiment with that, but make sure that they fill it in. Um, I mean, I left a little bit of white in mine. It's kind of, you know, but that work on the coloring aspect of filling it in. And I left a little bit of white space at the end. Again, this is abstract art, so it doesn't have to be completely realistic. So we've got this strong base. I'm gonna color my brown. And then 
I'll have this beside it so we, you can see where we're going. Sorry, you know, these are these high budget films in my kitchen. You can probably hear my dishwasher going in the background. Everyone else is asleep. This is just when I could do the video this week. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We did five large limbs behind all of this um, collage that we did. So they don't need to necessarily follow their fingers because um, we want to have some kind of branching down. But five is just a good spot to start with. We're going to do five main branches coming off of this because you don't want to get ten and then we're wearing, spending the whole time coloring the branches when we need to move on to cutting and gluing. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. And you know, like, oh man, mine doesn't look very good. Well, you know what? Even the great artists, when they're starting out, like, there's a lot of work that goes into it. There's a lot of layering to get to the point. So don't worry, it's okay. And then let's have off each of these at different spots. Let's have, we could say we're making them into Y's or giving them like little V's so that each branch is gonna have another branch coming from it. And then like, okay, let's choose two and let's give another little branch off to the side, okay? Like, great, now let's stop. Because again, we don't want there to just be lines going everywhere. So we did five main branches that are touching here. We get each of those five, one shoot off from there. And then we went back and, you know, he chose two more to put another V. So we need to make our branches really strong so they can hold, stay on the tree. And so we want to make this part thicker. That's where the strength is gonna be. So we're not gonna make this part any bigger. We're gonna come here and we're gonna make this a little thicker right here. And then we need this to be really strong where it's holding on to the branch. So we'll make that a little thicker right there. And again, this is just, this is not a realistic drawing. This is abstract. So we're just getting the feel of a tree and that we don't need to get caught up if it doesn't look perfect because really we're gonna be covering a lot of this up with our fun impressions of a leaf. So there's, it's gonna be skinny at the end. We need to make it stronger here at the base where it connects and go and do that for those points right there. Like so. And again, it's okay if it's bumpy and things are out of line, like branches are twisty and all different shapes and sizes. They're not perfect. Maybe kind of just connect this up here. All right, fill that in. Maybe you want to use a light brown and a dark brown. You know your students, so if you just need to only put brown out on the table um, for those obesitarians, then just do that. You are leading, guiding them in techniques and following directions and being able to explore the arts and they are welcome to do more of this at home. But right now they need to be following you. It's not only an art lesson, but just a good skill and listening lesson, right? I'll use a little reminder of that. And I would encourage them, the moms and the dads, whoever's with the child, to really encourage them to do this, that this is their artwork to be able to walk away with. Um, and a lot of times they can do it and we can help build their confidence and saying like, hey, I bet you can do this. Let me put your hand down and I'll help you measure, but you draw that line. Okay, so then we can put this aside their hands are kind of warmed up and then we can talk about scissors we can talk about when do we use them we need to ask a parent before we get them how do we hold them when we're walking them to the table all that kind of good stuff hold them like this um okay then you can take either your colored paper or your paint swatches i just think they're the paint swatches are fun and I had them on hand. Um, and then you're just gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing straight cuts. So you may wanna put the pieces of paper 
and you know maybe like four by four squares so that they're not having to cut all the way across that we can get these done in a few little snips. So here's my tip for scissors. So when you're cutting, you need to make sure that your scissors, your blades are always pointing out. You don't wanna be poking your neighbor to the left or the right. And a lot of times what, that hap what happens is when they start cutting sideways, then they're getting a really weird angle on their wrist and it's making it harder for them to control, but they're just like, oh, I need to follow the line. And then they're like all contorted. So if you keep your scissors pointing out, and then what needs to move is going to be your paper. Now, there's no guidelines to follow on this. So you just cut, you move your paper, and you cut again, okay? If you were following a line, if you're cutting out a shape, not for this project, but for another one, let's say that you're doing like a circle, then you just rotate your paper around. It's easier on your hand. You're not asking your hand to also cut and then rotate. And again, you could just get really contorted and you just move your paper with your opposite hand. So I remember I was in college when I learned, when I was doing my student teaching, how to cut with scissors. And I was like, yes, that's so easy and amazing. So I hope that helps. And that's what part of this lesson is. It's just learning how to use um, things that we have probably interacted with and used before and just use them in maybe a better way. Or maybe you've got a great way, but this is just another option. Okay, so then we've got all of our pieces. We're gonna say, lay your scissors down. Great, somebody picks them up. That way, maybe our cutting's through. This is where you just need to monitor your class and whatever's going on. Okay, then. For glue, this is how I would recommend using glue. Um, I love just a good old glue bottle. Um, the glue sticks, they just, they go so fast. But I have like a huge gallon of glue. I just grabbed this one small bottle. But pour some glue onto a plate, paper plate. I just grabbed a glass one for some reason. Sorry, I'm getting off track here. It's late. but. Um, and then you're going to use a Q-tip. So you can throw the Q-tip away with a cotton squat, cotton swab, um, and you can throw the plate away after you use it. Or you could pass it on to the next class if they haven't done their art section and they could use this glue as well. So when you're doing this, I feel like potentially you can save on glue usage because you're there can being able to control the amount of glue better. So it's one reason I like to use it. And then when I taught art, it was also just a, it's just, that way you're not having like the heavy squeezer this, and then like you've got it all over. And so there you have it. There's my suggestion, plate, glue, Q-tip. So then when we're looking at the object, what we want to do that we want to glue is that we want to either just do some little dots along the edge. Now, Yes, their fingers are probably going to get a little bit of glue on it. And you say, hey, it's okay. It'll wash off after we do all of our gluing. Then you can um, go wash your hands. And then we just press it down and it will dry clear. So if you have a little bit of glue on the top of your leaf, it's okay. Now, we want to make sure when we're gluing down our abstract leaves, because we know these aren't really leaves and these aren't necessarily the shape of leaves, that they are touching a branch because they need to be connected to the tree. And they dab and you know several students could share this at the same time. Everybody gets their own Q-tip. If they need to put their Q-tip down, maybe they're worried they're figuring out placement, then say you need to put your Q-tip laying on the plate. And again, these are just tips and tricks to teach them so that it can make potentially craft and arts at home a little bit less um, hectic when we have good rhythms in place. So dab, dab, dab. Now another thing to talk about is overlapping. And in art, a lot of times we things, images overlap, whether it's in drawings or pictures. If we look at photographs, we there's a ton of overlapping. So when we look at our trees that are producing 
um, yummy fruits and nuts for us, their leaves are overlapping. They are touching each other. And so when they go to put leaves on here, their leaves can overlap as well. And so that's another um, little thing to teach them. And probably after one student has used the Q-tip, you can't really do too much more because they start, I've used this when I did the other one earlier. Um, and you may want to look at the sizes. I'm like, that's a lot bigger than what I had going on over here um, to make sure that they are appropriate for the small ones. Maybe you're like, you want to make sure they have a lot of larger ones um, and not too many small ones. Now, if you want to challenge your students, if you're teaching like the master's classes, then I would suggest this. You could get some paper and you could hole punch it. This is gonna be, it would look really cool to have all these little circles. You know, definitely very challenging. So, you may just need to, I'll look at the back of my finger, pick it up, dab some glue, and then glue it on there. And you can have all of these like little clusters of these circles to represent the leaves. Again, you could do different shades of green. You could do all colors of the rainbow. I mean, just, it does not, there's no rules. Now this is looking like some kind of berries on the tree. But just to show you, if you wanted to challenge your students for the upper levels, you could do the little dots as well. So, cycle two, week for abstract arts correlating with science for what are some parts of the food chain and we have our producer you can also look back from last year's i have just a generic abstract video and that has three different ones on there um, all of them use watercolor in some form which is an easy way for them to be able to paint but it's not too bad on the cleanup and stuff. So, hope y'all enjoy. Oh, and don't forget to have your student sign, and I like to date, their artwork. So, thanks for tuning in, and hope you have fun making your abstract tr producing trees.